Hello guys, we are out on a call of no cooling on an apartment fan coil and heat pump. This is first company. Blower's running, but there's no action outside, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check outside see if we have a blowing capacitor, which is the most common cause. I'm going to go ahead and set up our wireless probes for the high manifold. I have our return air probe in the return opening here. It's a pretty easy place to put it. What I'm going to do is find a spot for the supply probe that's closer to the unit outside because we're on the third floor. So this probe can transmit to that one and then that probe can transmit down to the I-manifold. This supply register comes directly off the main supply plenum, so I'm going to take this probe, put it up there. I just need to get a little bit of a ladder, so I'm going to run down and get that while I'm checking the outdoor unit. And our outdoor unit is right outside this window, three floors down, so it should have a pretty good uh, communication link up based on the fact that it's a pretty direct shot right down there about 30 foot. All right, we're at a train unit. What I did was I took this crankcase heater wire, which you can see here, crankcase here was actually grounded so it was tripping the breaker we turned the breaker back on everything is running now here's our supply probe nestled into a supply grill let's take a look at the phone here to see what kind of readings we receive while these items are in place all right guys we see the high pressure low pressure saturation temperatures superheat subcooling we have our return air dry bulb wet bulb supply air dry bulb and wet bulb uh, we don't see our target superheat here. It's listed down here. Let's go to the next screen and see what we have. Target superheat 13.8. Our target head pressure, target suction pressure. We're 1.72 tons, 20,800 BTUs with a 15.7 degree split. We have too much air in the system. There's a larger air handler. It's a 31 series air handler, which to me that's two and a half tons matched with a two ton unit. I think we're getting a little bit too much airflow, but we can actually see that if we go into our user settings. All right, we go into our system performance. We can see that we actually have a little bit of excess airflow, about 10% too much airflow. That'll raise our suction pressure a little higher, raise our superheat a little higher, cause some of our numbers to be off. But it's really cool to see this right here without having to measure it. You can see our temperature split on the other side is almost two degrees lower than it should be, and that's Pretty much because there's an excess of airflow. All right, we've been running for about 15 minutes. Our target superheat's fallen all the way to 11.8. Actual superheat's 25. So we have an excess suction pressure, a lower than normal discharge pressure, and I'll show you why that is. I'll tell you why that is. I have it on 10 sear fixed as a profile. This is actually a 12 sear system. This coil is going to be a little bit oversized as well. So the head pressure will actually not be as high as this would indicate. Our target head pressure you see is 270, which we're going to be a lot less than that. Uh, 232 is probably right on track for where we would be with our system here. On the suction pressure side, you see it's a little bit elevated. We have a little excess airflow causing that. The airflow indicator on the I manifold is in the green area. Uh, I think if we had just a little bit more airflow, we'd probably go up to the top there. About 10%, up to about 15%, I've seen it fluctuate. Other than that, everything's cooling down. Our temperature split's actually pretty good. It's about two degrees off where it says it would be, but then again, we have excess airflow causing that. Basically, basically if the air speed is high, you're basically not gonna receive as much cooling, just imagine. You know, you run through a sprinkler slowly, you're going to be soaking wet. You run through it fast, and uh, you're not going to be very wet at all. That's my analogy for today. If we look at our system performance here, we see that we have a nominal 800 CFM. We have two tons, basically 400 CFM per ton. We're coming out at about 1.7, 1 and 3 quarter tons. If we look down here, we have our BTUs per hour. We have 21, 15,000 sensible, 5,000 latent. As your air speed increases, your latent cooling is going to decrease. If your air speed, 
it's slower, you're late to an increase. Basically, think about it, colder coil, the air is going to condense more rapidly, you're going to remove more moisture from the air. So we have a 5,400 BTU latent. So there's our, well, almost 5,000 BTUs of latent cooling. If we slowed that fan speed up, if it were possible, it's not. We would get an increase in latent cooling there. But once we pass beneath the 800 CFM of nominal airflow, you would then see the total cooling drop. Because although you'll achieve more latent cooling, there's a balance. If you slow the airspeed too much, you'll not be able to control the temperature in the air. If I weren't a worker 